Today I have a new pen light review from Oivon. It's the Aurora A33 model. It's available in a variety of colors and comes with optional high CRI LEDs as well. It even has USB-C to charge on board underneath the tail cap here. Thanks to Royvon for sending this to me to review. A link to where you can find it as well as to my social media channels are down below in the description. Now if you're interested where I have this cool mat, I got that from Photon Freaks. It's the patent drawing of the first flashlight. So it's pretty cool. I'll put a picture of that and a link to that as well. Here is the packaging that the Aurora A33 comes in. It's a basic black packaging with a line drawing of the light. You've got just some information on the sides, IPX water rated, it's USB-C, it's got a lithium polymer battery inside. On the back, you just have a little bit more information. I do have the high CRI model here, 200 lumens, TIR optic, 90 CRI. Accessories are limited, but you do get the pocket clip, which is pre-installed on the light, but is removable, a six inch USB A to C cable, along with a manual and a warranty card. The Aurora A33 is made from aluminum and my example here is anodized in green. There are several other body colors available including black, gunmetal, red, desert tan. Starting at the rear of the light you can see this nice metal button. It has a nice machine pattern to it. It does sit just ever so slightly below the lip of the light. It does allow the light to tail stand just fine and stand on its front. The button itself is a little bit vague in feeling here. It works fine, it's an electronic switch, but it's just not the most solid uh, feeling button ever. To access the charging port, you twist this tail cap and the whole thing twists off. And I think it's important to grab here at the top and a little bit of the body color left, not the clip itself, because that clip rotates fairly easily. But as you can see underneath there is your USB-C charging port and you've got your charging status LED indicator. Now, when your battery is low, this comes on red and tells you when you are low on power, except in the configuration you're gonna use the light in, you can't see that LED. The body tube has some spiral milling on it. You can see here, it's kind of like gashes almost. I, I like the style. It provides a little bit of grip, not overly grippy though, but it feels good in the hand. Up front, it does grow in diameter just ever so slightly here that you can barely see. The front is glued on, but it does look like it's removable. I couldn't get it to move myself. Underneath in the center there, you do have a TIR optic reflector and a piece of anti-reflective coated glass. Internally, there is a 600 milliamp hour lithium polymer battery sealed in the light. It is non-user replaceable. So let's talk about retention here. The primary retention is this included deep carry pocket clip. The clip can be removed with a decent amount of effort. It does stay on the light pretty easily. That said, it does rotate around. I think a captured clip here would have been nicer. It is deep carry, which I really like here but I wish the spring tension was just a little bit stronger here when I kind of pull out it's fairly easy to bend out and while I had no problems with this I wish it was just a little bit more secure in my pockets there is a small step in the clip here and that didn't provide any problems with as big as space as material they left in here I'm a fan here overall the clip is better than 85% of the flashlights out there and you'll see what the competition uses in my uh, competition section so size and weight I measured the length of the Aurora A33 at 119 millimeters maximum diameter at the tail at 16.5 millimeters max Minimum diameter on the body is 14.6. Weight with the clip installed is 42.6 grams. The light is IPX8 water rated, which I did test in a glass of water overnight. So just a quick little comparison here. I've got the Lumen Top uh, IPY 365 here. This is an older model, but very similar to what they're currently making. And the Nikkor um, MT06 MD, which I reviewed uh, quite a while ago. The Nikkor is very, very similar in terms of LED and output. It runs off two uh, AAA batteries. The uh, the Lumen Top is a little bit less. It's cool white. It's just not my favorite light. We can see the pocket clips on these are more standard. They are stiffer, but not as deep carry. Uh, for me, I prefer carrying the Aurora A33 here. The A33 is available here with two LEDs. I have the Nisha 219C at 5000 Kelvin, 90 CRI, but a Cree XP G2 LED is also available. You, you gain about 20 more lumens for 200 total with the G2 LED, but uh, you saw suffer in CRI. This light is using that TIR reflector. It produces a medium sized beam that we can see here. It does have a bit of a hot center, which is nice. And we'll see that in my night shots. It's a good style of beam for the type of light this is, in my opinion. There is some PWM that my scope picked up here. It's fast and not noticeable to my eye or camera, but the scope does catch it. Output on the Nisha model that I have here are rated at half a lumen, 15 lumens, 60 lumens, and 180 lumens. Okay, here is the Royvon Aurora A33. This is running that Nisha 219C LED, about 5,000 Kelvin, 90 CRI, and I've got it on the half a lumen moonlight mode here. 
bumping up. Here is the low mode at 12 lumens. See the beam shape out of that TIR optics here nicely, nice high CRI. Here is that same 12 lumens. You just kind of can see the throw bumping up one more time. Here is the medium at 50 lumens and we can see that it throws out, hits my normal fence here, no problem. And last is high at 180 lumens. It will hold this for one hour and that holds out in my runtime test, which we'll see next, but nice high CRI here, nice tint. This is what you want in my opinion, and it really is nice as a affordable pen light. The light has four modes. I did the runtime test for the first two, or for the highest two. The high lasts a total of 88 minutes, and the first 12 of those, you're above 90% relative output. You do see a slight decline in total output across that time. At the 45 minute mark, you still are producing 80% of your relative output, and that's pretty good. After this, you see a sharp decline on the remaining amount of time and the higher temperature I saw was 36C at the 40 minute mark. On medium, the light lasts for an impressive five hours, 48 minutes. It's got a little bit of an S curve to it, making me think there might not be much regulation in this mode. That said, it was making 60% rel output at the two hour, almost three hour mark. UI here is mostly simple. As long as you remember, you have to long press to turn the light on. It comes on in the lowest moonlight mode always. Then you can single press to go up to the other remaining three modes. I did notice if I tried to click quickly it didn't really go up you've got to give it a little bit of time i would love to a double or triple click here to get to a turbo the highest output i just think that's a nice shortcut that most lights should have and there is no memory here this is a revised ui on what the light originally shipped with Royvon has yet to update their website to reflect this but i confirmed this with the company and as i mentioned before there is an led inside the tail cap there for when the battery is low it does turn to red unfortunately you can't see that when using the light recharging is complicated via that onboard USB-C port that you can see there. And there is that charging status LED indicator that I talk about here. When you do have the tail cap up, you can see that that button is recessed. I can reach it by poking my finger down in there and the light does come on when charging, not an issue. That side LED indicator does glow slowly on and off to uh, tell you that the light is still charging and goes solid when charged. Total charge time of that internal 600 milliamp hour lithium polymer battery was an hour and two minutes at a max charge charge rate of half an amp. So for me, the pros are it's a neutral white option with high CRI available. Nice choice with the Nisha 219C LED. It's got a good deep carry pocket clip. I wish it didn't rotate as easily and was a little bit stiffer for a more secure fit. And it's affordable and in a good variety of colors. The cons are it's a built-in battery. It's non-user replaceable. It takes slightly longer to turn on with a long press than I'd like, but it doesn't come on accidentally in the pocket this way. And the instructions don't reflect the UI modes that are currently shipping with the light. My conclusion is that I like the Rovon Aurora A33 as a pin format sized light. It's got the enthusiast in mind in a number of body colors and neutral white high CRI LED option. The Nisha 219C in 5000 Calvin is a great choice here for a number of tasks. I like that it's got that onboard USB-C charging as well as it makes it convenient to charge and charges fairly quickly. The UI here is good, not great, and I'd say the same with that pocket clip. I just like it to be a tad bit more secure. Overall, as long as you don't mind a sealed battery, I think this is the best pen light I've reviewed in a few years. It's affordable, has a choice of LEDs and body colors, it's got a good clip, and overall it's a well-rendered package that I can recommend. Let me know in the comments guys if you've got any questions on this light or any others, make sure you subscribe so you can catch me on the next review. So thanks for watching.